Welcome to the last unit of AP Chemistry. Uh, after this unit, we'll start our month-long review session to get ready for that test. Um, before we get started um, with electrochemistry, I need to remind you that if you do not remember how to balance redox equations, uh, you need to go back and refresh your memory. They may not necessarily ask you to balance the whole redox equation per se, but they definitely will want you to know uh, which which item is being oxidized, which is being reduced, because you're going to have to be able to tell me where those happen at, in the um, electrochemical cells themselves. Um, here are some terms you need to know. I'm not going to read them to you. You know how to read, uh, but I do want to point out a few things. Uh, first thing is the voltaic cell or galvanic cell. They are the same thing. You do need to recognize both names because sometimes they'll refer to one or the other. Um, it is a battery. Uh, it is thermodynamically favored, or what we used to call um, spontaneous. They will happen on their own, uh, and they will generate useful electrical energy. Um, an electrolytic cell is the opposite. It is not thermodynamically favored, and we have to drive that reaction. Usually, we put a battery on it to happen. Uh, last year in, in uh, pre-AP chemistry, or two years ago, if you recall... When we made the pennies, we hooked them up to the batteries and we coated the pennies with zinc. Um, that was an electrolytic cell. We had to drive that reaction with the battery, and then, of course, we put it in the Bunsen burner and we turned that coating into brass. Um, you also probably remember this from last year or from Chem 1, oil rig, which stands for uh, oxidation is loss or reduction is gain of electrons. That's a way to help you remember which happens. Some people use uh, Leo goes Gur. Uh, if you like that, you can use that as well. Oops, that does not look like Gur, which basically says loss of electrons is oxidation, gain of electrons is reduction. Um, you will never hear me use that other than that. I like oil rig. It's easier. And of course, when we oxidize, uh, we are losing electrons, so you will have an increase in charge um, of your thing. So in other words, when I lose electrons, let's look at sodium. Sodium will lose one electron, uh, and so you would get sodium plus, plus the electron over here. Uh, reduction is the gain of electrons, um, and so you're going to have a reduction in charge because, remember, you're losing things that are negative. So if we had fluorine, fluorine would be gaining an electron, and then over here it would be an, not an E, sorry about that, Fe minus. So that's how that would look. And of course, your oxidation number are those uh, assigned charge on an atom. Again, if you don't remember how to um, do oxidation numbers, you're going to need to go back and review that. If you're talking about a monoatomic element, such as what we just did, uh, the oxidation number is the same uh, as its charge. But there are times, uh, especially for covalent compounds, when they are sharing electrons, that we have to assign those charges. Uh, just to give you an example, I could have SO4 2 minus, which is sulfate. And so my oxygen would have a negative 2 oxidation state because oxygen always has a negative 2 unless it's in a peroxide. Um, but my sulfur would have a plus 6 charge. And the way that I fi figure that out is I know that if I have oxygen as a negative 2, I have 4 times a negative 2, which gives me a negative 8. My overall charge of my ion has to equal that negative 2. So what plus a negative 8 is a negative 2, and that is plus 6. So that would tell me that my sulfur is a plus 6. If that totally lost, dazed, and confused you, you'll need to go back and, f and uh, remind yourself how to do... Um, oxidation states. Okay, So when we're talking about electrochemistry, there are going to be two main types of cells. We already kind of discussed it up there, and that is galvanic or voltaic cells. Again, you must know those both words. Um, and these are the ones that are thermodynamically favored. Uh, and then electrolytic are not favored, they're unfavored, and they require an external uh, electron source, such as a direct current or a DC uh, power source like we plug it in. Okay. Uh, both of these do fit into the category of electrochemical cells. And so here's the difference. Um, let's see if we can get that all on one page. Yes, we can. So in the first one, the 
um, galvanic cell or voltaic. So let's just go ahead and write voltaic there so we get in the habit of knowing both of those terms. Um, you have um, the electrons flowing from the anode to cathode. Actually, in both of them, the anode to cathode will, will always flow uh, from that direction for the electrons. The energy released uh, by a spontaneous or thermodynamically favored redox reaction is converted to electrical energy. Um, in this case, uh, we would have the oxidation reaction and the reduction and then the overall cell. And then delta G would be negative. Why? Because for delta G to be uh, negative, that means it's thermodynamically favored. And then if you look at um, the other side, the electrolytic, we're driving that battery that, that cell with a battery or a power source um, and then so we're using electrical energy to drive a non-spontaneous reaction uh, and then of course that overall delta G is going to be positive because it is not th thermodynamically favored. So that's just the basic difference between the two. Um, so let's look at the galvanic or voltaic cell anatomy and what it involves. So here are some things we need to understand. The anode is where we have oxidation. Uh, a handy little acronym to remember that is ANOX, or anode oxidation. Uh, the cathode is where the reduction takes place. We remember that with red cat. This unit is just full of little acronyms to help you remember these things. I highly encourage you to use the acronyms to remember them, especially when you're on the test, especially the AP exam, exam when everything's all jumbled in there. You see that, you automatically do oil rig, anox, red cat, and that makes your life a lot easier. Um, we have inert electrodes that are often used uh, when a gas is involved or when it's an ion to ion, such as uh, one of the transition metals being reduced to the smaller charge um, rather than putting just the iron in there in this case, uh, and then sometimes platinum or graphite. We are actually going to do a mini lab or a labtivity uh, where we're going to use graphite as our electrodes. So it's going to be the first time we do it, so I hope it works well. Um, the salt bridge, you have to have a salt bridge uh, that is to maintain the electrical neutrality in the galvic cell. Uh, it's going to be filled with an auger, or, and it's usually a neutral salt. Potassium nitrate, perfect example of what they like to put in the salt bridge. Okay, um, The electron flow always goes anode to cathode. That's alphabetical order. That makes it um, easy to remember. The voltmeter is what's going to measure the cell potential in uh, EMF, which is in volts, um, and then that's what that looks like. So here we have zinc and copper. Uh, zinc is being oxidized and copper is being reduced. So what's going to happen is those anodes uh, send the electrons over to the cathode. The electrons are going to deposit and the cathode is always going to get bigger. And, of course, we have an a acronym to help you remember that, and that is fat cat. Because the cathode will get bigger because the electrons are being deposited on there, and then you see from the picture where it blows up that the cathodes, uh, since it's got electrons in there, the copper 2 that's in solution is going to be deposited onto that cathode. And then the overall reaction is going to look like this because it is a um, oxidation reduction, and we would just be writing the net ionic. Now we have nitrates in there. The nitrates are there to uh, because we have to have a solution to do this, but the nitrates are spectator ions. Okay? Um, so if you take note of the mnemonic devices, here we go. I wrote them here as well, or actually I didn't. They did, the person that wrote the notes. Um, so anox, oxidation occurs at the anodes. Red cat, fat cat, cathode, you can always remember because it's got the little plus sign for the T. The cathode is going to be uh, in a galvanic cell. It's going to be positive. So it stands to reason that the anode is negative. Um, this is going to be important. The salt bridge is there to provide ions to balance the charge. Okay, um, And then the difference before an electrolytic cell is in an electrolytic cell, the anode is positive. So that helps you remember that with EPA, electrolytic, positive anode. That's going to be the main difference there.
All right, uh, the galvanic cells show the oxidation reduction, so we're going to balance this redox reaction uh, to see if we can remember how. If you remember the half, me uh, half method, that's what we're going to be doing. And so just to remind ourselves, uh, we're going to see what's going on at the uh, reduction, and that is going to be and the OA and the RA. That stands for uh, oxidizing agent and reducing agent. And we did that in Chem 1, but that is not tested on the AP exam, so we're not going to do that. But basically, whatever re is reduced is the oxidizing agent because it beca causes the other thing to be oxidized. And whatever is oxidized is the reducing agent because it causes the other species to be reduced. Not really sure why they took that out. It's not that hard to get, but they did take that out of the scope of the AP. All right, so we're going to start um, with the manganese. Uh, or permanganate, excuse me, because that is being reduced. So we're going to say MnO4 minus, and it is going to Mn2 plus. So our manganese is balanced, so we're good there. But if you recall, the only way that we can uh, balance oxygen is to add water to the other side. So we're going to add 4 H2O. And then, of course, now our hydrogen is not balanced. So we're going to add hydrogen ions is the only way that we can do that. So we're going to add eight hydrogen ions. And now the last thing we do when we're balancing a half reaction is to balance the charge. Remember, the charge has to appear the same on both sides of the equation. And so over here, I have a total of a 2 plus. And on the other side, I currently have a 7 plus. So the way that I'm going to balance that is I'm going to go back and I'm going to add 5 electrons to that. And now that is a correctly balanced half reaction. So now we're going to do the same thing for the oxidation. That one is a lot easier because it is just iron 2 plus going to iron 3 plus. So what we're going to need to do to balance that is add one electron. Now if you remember, we have to have the same amount of electrons in both half reactions in, in order for this to work. Because when we have a galvanic cell, we have to have the, an equal number of electrons exchanging uh, with themselves. So we're simply going to multiply this by an integer of 5 so that we can get that. So when we do that, uh, this becomes 5 Fe2 plus going to 5 Fe3 plus and then five electrons. And then that's where you add everything up and cancel out um, the things that appear on both sides. In this case, it's just the five electrons. So then our overall reaction becomes eight H plus, plus permanganate, plus five iron two plus, yields five iron three plus, plus the manganese ion plus four water. Okay, now this would be in a basic, I mean this would be in an acidic or a neutral solution. If you have things in a basic solution you have to add the hydroxides, but honestly they're not going to ask you to do that on the AP exam, so you don't need to worry about that. Okay, so here's the overall reaction. We did that. If we place the permanganate uh, and the iron two in the same container, the electrons are transferred directly but no useful work is obtained so we would just get it released as heat but if we put that salt bridge in there and we connect that now we can harness that energy because um, we're going to we're going to separate what's being oxidized and reduced and going to use that to go through the wire and the anode to the cathode is going to if you do not have a salt bridge it will not happen so if I were to set this up and take out that salt bridge or block that porous disk uh, nothing would happen. It would just stop reacting. So you got to have that salt bridge. Um, so whenever you, if you're ever asked to draw a cell, it's best to just use potassium nitrate as your uh, salt bridge or as your auger because no precipitation would would occur with that. You don't want to use something that would be precipitating because potassium is a group one metal, always soluble. Nitrate's always soluble, so it's a good uh, one to to go. It's a good go-to for that. Okay, um, 
cell potential is the measure of the electromotive force or the pull of the electrons. It's going to be measured in volt and we're going to uh, be using a voltmeter. A volt um, is one joule of work per coulomb, which is going to be important throughout these calculations. Um, and here's your little animation if you want to watch that. And then let's look at this. And then we're going to wrap this up pretty quick and then start another video. Um, the origin of the standard reduction potentials, there is a table of those that have been um, published and you'll be, you'll be using those. On the AP test, they used to give you a whole chart of them and you had to go look them up. Now they pretty much just give you what you need to use. It makes it easier and faster. Okay, So each half cell has its own cell potential. It's measured against a standard, which is the standard hydrogen electrode, uh, which is immersed in some platinum. Um, the hydrogen electrode is assigned a value of zero, much kind of like what we did carbon-12 is for the isotope. Um, standard conditions, we've already talked about this when we were doing delta H, but standard conditions are going to be one atmosphere for gases, one molar for solutions, and 25 degrees Celsius, which is 298K. Not to be confused with STP. This is standard conditions. That little not sign, of course, is standard conditions. So that's the thermo, which the not means I'm at one molar, one atmosphere, and 25 degrees Celsius. So they may not actually tell you that in a problem, but if you see that little not sign, that means that you can assume that those conditions are present. Okay? Um, so that means that normally we're going to take this at standard conditions, but you're going to get an equation later on that shows you how to calculate it when you're not at standard conditions because most of the time you're not at one molar, okay? Not always at 25 degrees Celsius, okay? Um, here is a galvanic cell over here. What really happens? Uh, notice that that one molar is used. The overall charge would be 1.10, okay? So how do we make a fully functional galvanic cell? We have to make choices about our costs, elements that have um, are readily available and are cheap, work better, but let's talk about how we interpret the standard of electro potentials. Elements that have the most positive, okay, because remember in, electro, in a galvanic cell we're looking for a positive voltage, so the elements that are in there that are the most positive are the ones that when they get to be reduced. So if you, before you even look at the table, you could probably guess which element is going to be the winner of the reduction game, and that is going to be fluorine. Because fluorine is the most electronegative, it's the most likely to be reduced and gain those electrons. Uh, elements that have the least positive reduction potential, oftentimes negative, are going to be more easily oxidized. So if you remember from the activity series, lithium was at the top, meaning it would replace everything else. So if you look at the standard reduction potential, you guessed it, lithium is the most likely to be oxidized. And so you can see how that works. Okay, so let's look at these just real quick. I can't get the whole thing on the chart, so we're just going to look at the top. So what we were basically saying, these values over here, these are most likely reduced. Okay, and these are going to be most likely oxidized at the bottom. Okay, notice that all of these uh, in the standard reduction potential are all listed as a reduction. Okay, they're all listed as a reduction. But if you reverse it and oxidize it, just like with delta H, you're going to reverse the sign. But here is where it's not like delta H. If you have to manipulate that to balance that equation, you do not multiply the E cell. You change the sign, but you do not change the magnitude. And that is where a common mistake is made because with delta H and delta G and all that, we multiplied the integer by what we did with the equation. You do not do that for these. You leave that E cell value alone in terms of its magnitude, and all you do is change the sign. Okay? I got ahead of myself. Sorry. It's written down there below the reduction potential. Okay? And then, of course, these are the most likely to be oxidized down here and if we oxidize them we're going to reverse sign. Okay? So here we have what I just said. Basically you reverse the equation but but not multiplying it. Okay? 
Why not? Because the volt is the equivalent to a joule coulomb, which is a ratio. And then once you figure out what's going to be oxidized and what's going to be reduced, you add them together. So this is what we do right here. We're going to add those together. Okay? And again, reminding you that the not means at standard conditions. Okay, I feel like that's a good place to stop the first video so it's not too long. So I'm going to stop that here and start on another one.